Hi, this is the uh, seventh lesson on the Beatitudes, and it is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. We have seen, uh, as we've looked at all of these so far, how the gospel is absolutely vital. Jesus, by sharing from the gospel of, in, in the Sermon on the Mount, is making it very plain that the standard that he has set can only be achieved by the grace of God. It is not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy that he saves us. So in each one of these Beatitudes, what they ought to cause each one of us to do is to turn to the Lord, to acknowledge, Lord, I need to be poor in spirit, to acknowledge, Lord, I need to mourn over my sin. I need, Lord, you to be the Lord of my life, to fulfill the, the, the call of God, to experience the blessings of God, I need God. It is not God speaking from heaven and saying, now you're going to be blessed if you do all these things. It is God from heaven saying, you need my blessing in order to be able to do these things. You need me. And as you live in these things, even more blessing will come. So the next one in Matthew 5, 9 is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Now in Isaiah, it tells us, chapter 48, 22, it says, There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. We don't live in a world of peace, friends. Uh, war is, seems to be continual. And one war finishes and another one starts. And that has been the case down through the centuries. It's interesting that the uh, defining moments in history are usually when wars start and when wars end. Did you ever think of that? That the history of the world is marked by wars. And it is the, almost, it is the highlight of history. When I went to school, the history book was basically a history of wars. And friends, that is the sad reality of the world. And yet the scripture says here, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Who are the peacemakers? Oh, some would say, well, uh, blessed is the United Nations or its predecessor, which was called the League of Nations. Or this must mean those who get the Nobel Prize for Peace. Really? That's not what's being referred to here. You see, the kind of peace that the world brokers is a peace that is a, a lack of violence. That doesn't mean that there isn't that there is actual peace. I can take two people, supposing I had two children and they were in a row with one another. And I sat them down and I said, okay, that's it. Say you're sorry. I'm sorry. Say you're sorry. I'm sorry. Are they sorry? No. Is there real peace between them? No. It's a peace, but it's a brokered peace that really doesn't create peace in their hearts towards one another. It just creates a facade of peace and maybe they're not hitting each other or being violent to one another in the process. So friends, real peace, real peace has to happen within. Genuine peace. Not the peace that the world gives. Jesus actually said, I'm giving you peace, but not the peace that the world gives. Um, and that is, there's quite a difference between the peace of God and the peace of man. John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So the contrast tells us here in the word of God that Jesus is offering a peace different than the peace that the world gives, different than the United Nations and uh, 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 truces and pacts that are made between countries and the kind of forced peace 
that is often happening in our world systems. So, if you're going to be a peacemaker, we have to find out, well, what kind of peacemaker is it? If it's not the United Nations peacemakers, who are the blessed peacemakers who are called the children of God? Well, let's find out. The way to do this, I think, first of all, is to identify the source of peace. Romans 15.33 says, Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. He's the source of peace. Romans 16.20, The God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. And so we can see that his title is a God of peace. And then we go to Isaiah 9, 6, and we see the title of Jesus Christ. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace, the title of Jesus Christ. And of his increase of his government there shall be no end. Of his government and peace there will be no end. One of the titles of Jesus is Shiloh, until Shiloh come, which means the place of peace. So we can say safely that God is a God of peace. We can say that he is the true source of what real peace is. John 14, 27, I read to you already, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And John 16, 33, these things are spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have be of good tribulation, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ he's the god of peace his name is prince of peace his name is shiloh which means peace it is evident then and he desires to give that peace to us and the wonderful truth of it all is that you find in the new testament over and over again this phrase peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 1, 7, it's what it says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 2, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So what do we find here? Uh, First uh, Corinthians 1, 3, grace to you and peace from God our Lord, uh, Father. Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Thessalonians 1, 2, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord of peace, Second Thessalonians, he's called the Lord of peace himself. May he give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. And so what do we have here? We have this. We have the fact that God, his title is peace, that he is the source of peace, and that he is granting peace to his people, peace from God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. So praise God. So we start with this little phrase, peace from God, source of peace. You want to be a peacemaker, you want to be one of those peacemakers, first thing you have to understand, you need the source of peace, and that's from God, not from us. We are not the source of peace. We are the source of turmoil. We are the source of wickedness, all of us. Every one of us have been this. We don't have to be, not when Christ comes in, but we are without. How much war there is. You don't have to go to Lebanon or go to to the Middle East or go to uh, any war-torn country in the world and say, oh, that's where there's war. There's war in your own communities. Say, well, there's war in the school. There is. There's not peace. There's war. There's war amongst children, sadly. There's... Uh, the whole bullying thing is a lack of peace. Not p- reconciled peace together, but war. Friends, we don't live. It looks peaceful often on the outside, but there's not a lot of peace in the hearts of people. Wherever there is hatred, wherever there is bitty, bitterness, wherever there is envy, wherever there is strife, it's not peace. It's not peace. And, and, and you don't have to just go to the local coffee shop in any community and sit down for a while and listen to what's being said. And when you leave, you will know this is not a place of peace. 
Often some people have moved to idyllic looking communities and said, wow, this is like heaven on earth. Until they find out it's the same everywhere. Wherever human nature is, there is a lack of peace. Praise God that in his grace and where grace and his mercy flows, there can be a, a deliverance from this. But he's the source. But he is the source for a purpose. The peace that comes from God is so that you might have peace with God. Did you know that you are at war with God? Romans chapter 5 tells us that we are the enemies of God. We have set ourselves up as the enemy of God. There is a spiritual warfare that is ongoing, and it is wicked forces that are against God. And sadly, we have aligned ourselves. The human race has aligned itself with those wicked forces. We have found ourselves on the wrong side. There has been a great divide. And God, who is the author of peace, reaches across that divide, peace from God, in order that there might be peace with God. And so this is the verse in Romans 5.1 I want you to think about. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, peace from God, but now we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.20 says, by him, by Jesus Christ, to reconcile, now reconcile means to make peace, uh, all things to himself by him, whether things on earth, things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. The plan and the passion of God is to reconcile things to himself, to make peace with you. You're the one that's at war with God, and it's because of sin. Sin has made a separation between us and God, and it has caused us to be the enemy of God by our conduct and by our very nature. But what does God want to do? He wants to break down that wall. He wants to bring us into peace with him. So, him being the source of peace, we identified, as we saw in Romans chapter 5 and, uh, and in Colossians 1.20, we identified the fact that it tells us that um, we can have peace with God. Peace with God. So then we have, not only we have peace from God, we have peace with God, then suddenly we have what's called the peace of God. When we, peace is made with God through the blood of his cross, that's what it says here, it's only through the death of Jesus Christ that the barrier comes down. It's through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. When you come by faith to him, the wall is broken. You are taken out of the kingdom of darkness, according to Colossians chapter 1, and you're translated, you're moved into the kingdom of the son of his love. And when that happens, you have peace with God. No longer is the sin barrier between you. Now it's gone, so you have fellowship with God. And that peace that you have with God does something inside of you. It brings into your life and into your soul the peace of God. Praise God. It brings the peace of God. So peace from God, peace with God, leads us to the peace of God. Now when we have the peace of God in us, Colossians 3.15 says this, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are called in one body and be thankful. Let the peace of God rule. Praise the Lord. Oh, I tell you, friends, I can tell you before I was a believer, my life was full of turmoil. I was full of turmoil. I had no peace. But now I have a peace. It's the peace of God. And it comes because I have peace with God, which came from God. Because God goes back to him. So where does that lead us when it says, blessed are the peacemakers? So far, what we're discovering is that God is the peacemaker because he's the source of peace and he creates a situation of peace with him. And not only does he do that, but then he implants his peace in us. The Bible says the fruit of the spirit, one of the fruit of the spirit is peace. And so he, him coming into us brings the peace of God into our lives. Philippians 4 7 says this. It says uh, in 4 6 to 9, I'll say, or 6 to and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, 
and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. Oh, friends, what treasure this is. How awesome it is that the author of peace has come and made peace with the human race, offering peace. And as that peace is offered and is accepted, then suddenly we experience peace from God. And as a result of that, we have peace with God. And as a result of that, we have the peace of God. Well, those are important things to think about, are they not? So who are the, then become the peacemakers? We say that the Lord is, but obviously in the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord is taking us to speak not only of himself, of course he's the peacemaker, but then he's called us to be peacemakers. Well, how does that work? How do you become a peacemaker? Well, listen to what the word of God says about this. Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Now, what do we find here? We find that once I have the peace of God, because I have peace with God, because it came from God, now I am looking to proclaim that peace to others. I become a peacemaker. You see, once I was at war with God, not even aware of it, but I was. And my friend, every person who has not yet trusted Christ as their Savior is at war with God. Romans 5 says that we are enemies. That's what it says, enemies of God. You might go to church, you might say prayers, you might try to do good works, you might try to be the nicest person you can be, but because of the sin in your life, you're an enemy of God and you need to be made right with God. I could take you to the book of Acts chapter 10 and we would find a man named Cornelius who was a, a man who did everything that he could to do the right thing. He was a man who prayed diligently, a man who gave abundantly, a man who had acts of mercy. Everything that you see about this man named Cornelius, you say, wow, that's a Christian. And God says, no, that's not a Christian. I need to send Peter to him to, for, so he becomes a Christian. So he finds out about Jesus Christ so that he can come into peace with God. So Peter then was a peacemaker. He was a peacemaker in that he was bringing two sides together. God on one side and a person who has not yet trusted Christ on the other side. So the peacemakers are those who are bringing together people to God. Isn't that exciting? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Because that is what the children of God do. They are looking to see peace. Not the fabricated peace of the world, but genuinely people coming into peace with God. Let me read you a few more verses about this. Romans 10, 15 is a quote actually from Isaiah 52, 7 that we already read. How shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Here it is again. Ephesians 2, 14. He himself is our peace who has made both one and broken down the middle wall of separation. And this speaks about peace between the Jews and the Gentiles, everybody being one in Christ. It is a picture as well of every person, never mind whether you're black or white, or whether you're woman or man, whether your your ethnicity is this or that, or whether you're, uh, you know, you have PhDs or whether you, you plow the ground. Peace. A real peace, not based on common uh, job experiences or, or anything like that, but based on the, being received into the family of God by faith in Jesus Christ. It says in Ephesians uh, 2.17, Jesus came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near, and we preached peace. 
Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, says Ephesians 6.15. This is for every believer. This isn't just for a preacher. We are all peacemakers in this way, that we are seeking for people to be reconciled to God. That doesn't mean we're always going to be preaching. I can, if I pray for my neighbor to come to know the Lord, I'm being a peacemaker. I'm being a peacemaker because I am praying for reconciliation in a situation like this. And God answers prayer. Do you see how you can be a peacemaker? Now, I want to encourage you, if you want to be a peacemaker, the first place is to make peace with God yourself. To understand you need the peace that comes from God. You need to have peace with God. And so uh, we have this these commands, for example, endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So peace with one another. It ought to be that Christians ought to have peace with one another. No wars. There shouldn't be wars in a church. Yeah, you might say, well, that sounds kind of far-fetched, doesn't it? The sad reality is, is there are people in churches who are not saved, and they will never be at peace until they come to Jesus Christ. That's one problem. The other problem is that there are people in churches who have moved away from dependence upon the spirit of the living God, and when they do, they no longer have the peace of God, and neither does anybody else around them. May you not be one of those. And may you understand, may you fall under conviction if you are not living in peace with the peace of God that passes understanding in your life. You are not a peacemaker. You're a peace breaker then. And oh, there's enough of that. And so uh, what can we say? We want the Hebrews 12, 14 to be the reality for me and for you. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue peace. You have the ability to pursue peace. You have the peace of God. And so the peace of God ruling in your heart causes you to have peace with others. So there we see the full circle of it. We see peace from God. We see uh, peace with God. We experience the peace of God. And then we experience peace with one another. It's full circle. It's exactly what we find when he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So we are involved then as believers ought to be those who are peacemakers. Peacemakers in two ways. First of all, they are peacemakers in that they are seeking to see people who are lost and still enemies of God to become reconciled to God. That's why in 2 Corinthians 5, it says this. Um, now all things are of God, verse 18, who has reconciled us to himself. God has done this. He has made peace through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He's talking about Christians. We have been given a ministry of reconciliation. Now, reconciliation means to make peace with, okay? So, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, making peace with the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, not counting their sins against them. That's because Christ died for them. That's the only answer for that. But has also um, committed to us the word of reconciliation. We are called to be those peacemakers, to reconcile lost people to Jesus Christ, being peacemakers. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Make peace with God. Because he made, who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And so... We are peacemakers in that we are calling the world, lost people, people who don't know Christ, to be reconciled to God by putting their faith in Jesus Christ. We become peacemakers, praying for them, reaching out, acts of kindness, and at the same time, bringing the gospel, revealing that it is through Christ 
That's why it says, if you're going to be reconciled to God, it's because he who knew no sin became sin for us. You can't get around the cross. Through the death of Jesus Christ, by the blood of his cross, it says in Colossians uh, chapter 3, or chapter 1, actually, it says, we are reconciled, having made peace through the blood of his cross. It's the only way that peace can be made between us and God. And then, not only do we go there, we look at, at establishing peaceful relationships with one another, the bond of peace, endeavoring to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Uh, and then, not only peace with fellow Christians, but to look to as much as possible to have peace with others and be a peacemaker in this world. A peacemaker that can be involved in situations in this world where we draw people towards peace instead of towards war. Oh, friends, what does it say? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. This is what the children of God are about. This is what Christians are about. If people say they are Christians and they are not in this, this is not part of their experience, I want to just tell you straight out, that's not Christianity and there's a good chance you're not a Christian at all. Because this is what the Spirit of God actually does in people who, who are not believers he brings them into peace with himself and then peace with others. And they also become reconcilers, people who want to others to come into peace with God. It's not unimportant. It's vital. It's Christianity. And if I have an ounce of compassion for my neighbors and my loved ones and people near and people far off, I will seek to be a reconciler, a peacemaker, a peacemaker so that others may come into this wonderful relationship with God. There's going to be peace in heaven. Did you know that? But as much as that is true, we ought to be the kind of peacemakers that the Word of God speaks of when it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. This is what the children of God do. They are peacemakers, not peacebreakers. So that's a mouthful, I realize, and I gave you a lot of scripture. The good news is that you have a button that can rewind. If you want to look up the scriptures for yourself, you can do that. You can go to every single one of them and, and peruse them, pray over them, think about it. But there's the quick outline again, just for your understanding, is that God is the source of peace that we need peace from God so we can have peace with God, so we can experience the peace of God, so that we can help others to come into peace with God as well, and we can be at peace with one another. That's pretty awesome. That's the work of the Spirit of God. What do we do with the words of Jesus then when he says, don't think that I've come to bring peace but a sword? which is pretty startling. Do you suppose I came to get peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. Oh, how in the world can that be with all I just said? From now on, there'll be five and one house will be divided three against two and two against three. This is in Luke chapter 12, verse 51 to 53. Father divided against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. What's all this? Where's the peace? Where's the man of peace? Where's the peacemakers? Well, my friends, here's what happens. If people don't have Christ, then they will be the enemies of God. If they remain the enemies of God, then they will put themselves as enemies against the people of God, and there will be division. It is not because peace is not available. It's because they refuse to take it. And sadly, that is the case. Now, I don't want to discourage you because God is gracious and many people do get saved, but there will always be people who will oppose the gospel and will stand as the enemies of God and the enemies of the people of God, and sometimes they will be of your own household. So there's no contradiction here because peace does not mean 
that you give up the things that are right and practice evil. If someone comes to you and said, come on, let's make peace. And they say to you, well, their idea of making peace is that you agree with sin. You agree with me that this is good and we'll make peace, even though it's wicked. And you say, no, I can't do that because I know that won't make for peace. I know that sin brings misery and destruction. I know that sin puts me on the wrong camp in terms of my a walk with God, and I refuse to walk in sin. So this person becomes angry and says, well, you're a bigot or you're this or you're that, and they become opposed to you as a result of you're taking a stand on the side of righteousness and still seeking to see this person reconciled to God and be reconciled. You want to follow peace as much as you possibly can. Now, there are Christians who often are very obnoxious and are not living with the peace of God. And sometimes it's a big question where they actually have peace with God. And they, uh, 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 because of their being obnoxious, because of their behavior and the way they, they talk to people or whatever it is, people will persecute them. Well, you're getting what you deserve if that's the case. And some people will cloud that and say, oh, it's because I'm a Christian. No, it's because you're obnoxious. You're not being a peacemaker. Peacemakers will have success, but they will also have people who will oppose them just because they are peacemakers. And if you suffer for this, then trust the Lord with it and rejoice. We'll get to that beatitude a little bit later. Let me leave you with a couple of verses as I close off today. In 2 Peter 1, 2, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Jude 1, 2, Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, I want to challenge you today. Make peace with God. Repent of your sins. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will experience that peace that comes from God. You'll have peace with God. And that, my friend, is worth more than all the gold of the world. And you will then experience the peace of God. And you will have a growing passion to be a peacemaker yourself. Amen. Oh, dear friends, be a peacemaker. But first, be a receiver of peace from the Lord. And when you do, you're going to want to share with the world. Just, it's like a light burning. And as, you know, you come with a candle and you light somebody other's candle and they light another candle. And just a, it's just a picture of coming together in peace. And praise God that Jesus took the first step so that we could have peace with God by coming one of us. This song is called Keep On Burning. God held a light in the palm of his hand and then he knelt on earth and became the light of man and Jesus is that light Shining all alone Like a beacon in the distance Showing the way home Keep on burning, burning brighter Till the darkness slowly fades away When you hold the light and you share it with a friend you start a candle burning whose flame will never end As Jesus lights their life we are sisters and brothers and now that we can see, we can help one another. Keep on burning, burning bright.
brighter till the darkness slowly fades away. All through the world, tiny lights are burning. We were lost and wandering, now to the light we're turning. So care for the light, don't you let it grieve away. For we have been entrusted with the coming light of day. Keep on burning, burning brighter Till the darkness slowly fades away Ah, it's an awesome Christianity. The children of God. That's what we're called when we are those blessed peacemakers. Amen.